What's up everybody, my name is Kevin Toppenberg. This is gonna be the start of a series of my Bridgeport Mill restoration. I know there's a lot of these uh, series on the internet and this is just my story. You may or may not wanna watch, um, but I have previously done a series on a South Bend lathe. I talked about how I went up to Connecticut, purchased it and came down. I'll just show a little bit of that footage to uh, recap how this uh, started because I got the Bridgeport at the same time. Uh, I went back and looked and I paid $1,100 for it. And then of course there's um, auction fees and everything on top of that. And of course that's when the expense just begins. Um, but uh, let's get started. Going up to Connecticut, coming down, I uh, had a flat tire, got rescued by um, U-Hauls, uh, calling out a roadside assistance truck and um, and then brought it back, tore up my lawn, uh, trying to get some, uh, equipment moved down to my shop, but ultimately we got it all into the shop down at the bottom of the hill and we can get started taking it apart. So it's really stiff to move and I think that someone has put grease in here. So I need to take this table off and clean it all out. Make sure all my, my grease, I'm um, not sorry, my oil um, channels are open. So I'm gonna have to take this all off and uh, give it a cleaning. I was hoping I wouldn't have to do that, but I think I'm gonna regret it if I don't. Okay. Okay. There is a key right there. That, this whole unit then comes off. Well, I'll just leave that I'll just leave it alone for right now. But this thing here will come off. Let's finish taking the rest. Actually, I'm put these back in here. Put that there. Let's come over here. And that will go there like that. All right, that's that side. It's all just gone. It's just nastiness. I mean, that's the, the whole thing is just full of chips and grease and goop. Probably the same nut. The same uh, wrench, I should say. You getting any movement? There you go. Pop that off. Okay. Well, that's got to come out over top, over the end of that. From here, the table will slide off. All right, can you um, you lift on that end? We're just gonna slide it that way. That way, yeah, about five feet. There's an adjustment get right in there that needs to come out, and put it in that last box that we had. I don't know where you move over there by the. Other part. Here's my gib, full of grease, covered with grease, I should say. Nasty. I don't know, my other one was was at least like a hundred and some pounds. Try lifting it, just lifting at the end and see what you think. side and I'll get on this side and just kind of ease it off. It's going to swing down. There you go. It's not light by any means. It's falling. Okay. 
That was good work. That was most of my goal. I'm gonna to try to get it someplace. Looks like they put a shin in there. Do you wanna move the camera? Huh? Move the camera. Yeah. Okay, so we got this table. We got the uh, table down onto this other table. I'm just curious. I wanna look at, can you help me flip it? where there is, but I don't see any obvious damage. So here's the thing. Normally, like if you have a truck engine or something like that, the grease is nice because it's sticky and it stays there. But when you're dealing with a mill and a machine, it puts off these little tiny chips. And if one of those chips gets trapped in here, then it just scrapes, scrapes, scrapes. And it just, and so that's why you're supposed to use a really lightweight whey oil that just kind of flows. But my main goal for today was just to get it off. So that's, that's actually good. And Got lots of thick grease in here. Eek. Maybe I'll just go ahead and get the saddle off while you're here. Kind of just stabilize it so it's not flopping around. Okay. Now, actually, I think I think that this is a two-edged thing. It's got a screw that goes this way, and if you go down one layer, like if this is a layer, then down another layer, there's another screw that goes this way, and I think that this got both of them. So as I recall, you can't take off this without taking off this screw, which I was kind of hoping to not have to do. Can I at least wipe up some grease? Yeah, absolutely. Use that hammer to tap off that end. Well, I mean, it's just because of friction. I mean, if I lift them off, see, they'll lift off. And you rotate it. See, isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. So now we, this will slide off because this is just like this. We need to take this off. There's a gib. But as nasty as this is, this is so much amazingly nicer than when I did my other one. The other one was just all rusted and... What other one? My other nail. It's at Knox Makers. Yeah. We had to redo... Um, I think I got the bearings wrong and it started vibrating and it wouldn't cut right. And so he um, got a new spindle and um, we're in the process of putting it all back together again. Not a good place to grab it here. Right. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've lifted this one by myself. So I think if you and I are on the opposite sides, we can we can slide it onto here. 
just don't have a good way to grab it. Yeah. It's also greasy. It's even a slip out of my hand. Worst came to worst though, it's just gonna fall onto here. Okay, so like right under here is also a place. Well done, well done. I mean, that's where the chips are supposed to go, right? No, they're supposed to be a cover. They're supposed to just kind of go around here and then you clean them up. They're not supposed to get in there where you can't get at them. All right. Well, we've made more progress here today than I thought we would, to be honest. I think my next thing is going to be to try to find a, a washing solution. I mean, a, a, a way to wash. So I think before I got one of those big uh, plastic containers, you know, I was afraid that once I started taking it apart, then I would want to take more and more and more of it apart. I mean, I really do want to get all that nasty chips out there, which means I'm going to have to take this part of, away uh, out as well. But it's nice that I've done this. Are you going to repaint it and everything? I don't think I want to. I think I've been there, done that. I mostly just wanted a mill that works. Because uh, I feel like I spent a year making one pretty and I don't want to do that again. Okay. I'm going to take this out as well. That's what it looks like down inside. Which is as bad as it looks. Is hugely better than when I did my other mill. Got my all my parts in different containers. So I don't think I'll have any trouble getting it back together. Well, I've made pretty good progress today. We got the table off, we got the carriage off, got the lead screws going for the X and the Y. Uh, the Z area in here still has a lot of chips. Um, the there was some trick I remember with my other mill about how this all went in there and I couldn't just do it in a couple minutes. So I've decided to leave that for another day. So now we're going to start doing some cleaning and I think I'm going to do that on another day. All right. I am a very dirty person. Look at all my grease on my arms. Um, I have been cleaning this mill and I didn't want to get all of it uh, on film. But let me show you what I have done. So I've cleaned most of those individual parts. I have a, a tub with some gasoline that I'm using as a solvent. And I've gotten all of my gears out. I've got this thing rigged, which I am hoping to goodness doesn't break or I'm gonna have a very bad day, but I think that everything's strong enough. I think it's mostly the, the limitation will be whether that hydraulic pump is strong enough to lift out at that lever arm, but you know, it's like 500 pounds at the end of, of where the chain is. And so I'm out farther than that. So I'm saying maybe 250 pounds and it seems to be lifting it. Okay. Um, I'm afraid that if I get it off, I'm not going to be able to get it back on because it's going to swing forward. But the reason I'm having to do it is it's got this sticky, just sticky, nasty grease residue. So I'm trying to see if I can get back behind there and clean it up here. But then again, you see it's got all that. I want to get that, all those chips out. So I may end up just having to take it off after all. Yikes! Well, I did go ahead and just lift it up the rest of the way off. And I'm glad I did. Look at how nasty that is back there. All of that needs to be cleaned up. So I'm just going to try to set it down gently on this cart and I'm hoping it's going to be strong enough to hold it. Need to do a cleanup, and then maybe we can put it back together. Okay, I've taken off these little zerts, which are supposed to be oil zerts, but people put grease in them. And I'm going to squirt in here and show what happens. All right, well, that one just goes straight through, but I think there's also 
an entrance here. Well, not doing it, but before when I would do it, I get these big slugs of grease out. There's a little bit coming through. Just nasty stuff. Look at that big plug there. Nasty. I mean, I don't see that any oil or anything would have come through any of that. So it's like once you start using grease, you'd have to keep using it. And then that grease just got sticky. So I'll just finish cleaning up this knee with the gasoline, using some WD-40 as needed. That's the is the Z-axis, that screw that uh, lifts up the knee. Uh, vacuum up all of that chips and nasty stuff. That table's a little bit weak, so I put those planks down to uh, hold the knee and not let the uh, metal of that cart collapse. Okay, everyone, I think that's gonna be it for today. Thanks for watching. Uh, next up, we've got to get that head off and the ram and the turret. And that, uh, we'll see how that's going to go. If you just give it a thumbs up and a like, I'd appreciate it. And stay tuned. There's going to be a lot of content coming out of this. All right, thanks. Peace out.